Good evening, everyone. Like Jess said, my name is Kendall Potter. I'm part of the pastoral staff here at Living Word, and this is like my third or fourth time being here at Fusion with you guys. And I am really excited to talk to you tonight about seeking joy and delight and wonder as a spiritual discipline. And so I wanted to tell you why that's so important to me. So I figured I'd start with a personal story. Um, about two years ago, I started suffering from anxiety. And so some of you might know a little bit about what that is like. Maybe you struggle with that yourselves. And so um, one of the things that anxiety does is you worry all the time. And so I found myself worrying all the time and really focusing on just stuff in my personal life, stuff in the world, stuff in our country, just stuff that was going wrong. And so I would just spend all of my time focusing on that and I was really struggling with this. And so I was praying about it. And I knew that I needed to have like some practices, some things that I do in my life to help me with that. And so one of those things for me was intentionally seeking out delight, intentionally seeking out joy. And so that is a way for me that I connect with God. And so spiritual disciplines, um, since you guys have been talking about spiritual disciplines, spiritual disciplines are intentional practices that connect us to God. So that just means these are things that you do that intentionally connect you to God. And so for me, seeking joy and delight and wonder is something that helps connect me to God. And so in Christianity, we tend to focus on um, just a couple of spiritual disciplines. So we focus on things like prayer. So you had Gordon come um, and talk to you guys about prayer. Um, we focus on reading our Bible. And like these are the big ones for being Christian. Uh, these are kind of the big spiritual practices, kind of the two main ones. But there are all kinds of ways that you can connect to God. So there are all kinds of things that you can intentionally do in your life to connect you to God. Um, and I put this quote up um, because I just wanted to reiterate this to you guys. Um, this is from a writer that I really like. Um, her name is Adele Calhoun. And she says, spiritual practices don't give us spiritual brownie points or help us work the system for a passing grade from God. They simply put us in a place where we can begin to notice God and respond to his word to us. And so the reason I wanted to remind you guys of that is whatever the spiritual discipline is, there's nothing that you can do that can make God love you more. There's nothing that you can do that can like earn favor with God. Jesus has already covered that. Um, but spiritual practices help you connect with God. They help you intentionally grow in your faith. Um, but you're not like getting a passing grade from God. Um, so I want to talk to you tonight about joy and delight and wonder and intentionally focusing on things that are good. Um, you probably have a friend in your life, um, Jess is one of these friends for me, that like when something is going good, when you've done something good, they can help you celebrate. So you probably have ways of celebrating if you get a good grade on a test, if you make a team, if you try out for something and you get it. Um, you probably have a friend in your life that does a really good job of helping you point out when something is worth celebrating. And so um, scripture tells us that God is worth cel celebrating. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of God's hands. And so we're, there are all kinds of things around us that are declaring God's glory. There are all kinds of things that move us to praise. And so when you stop in your life and you intentionally take the time to point out something that brings you joy or delights you or makes you feel small or gives you a sense of wonder, that helps you connect with God. That is a way that you can connect with him and be moved to praise him. Um, for me, one of the ways that I connect with God is always in nature. Um, I was actually camping this weekend. I got back this afternoon. Um, anytime I am outside, for me, that is a way that I delight in God. That is a way that I connect with God. It makes me feel small. Um, it gives me a sense of wonder. It reminds me that God is the creator God that made everything. So I know that that's a way that I can connect to God. So if that's the way I connect with God, I need to be intentional about doing it. And so um, sometimes uh, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, if I'm feeling sad, if I really need to connect with God, I will like purposefully put myself in nature because I know that that's a way that I can delight in him. 
Um, so this summer, I was kind of feeling like that, and I was walking around my yard, and I started looking at the zinnias in my yard. And I just started taking notice of these flowers that were growing and how cool they were. And they started out as like these tiny little buds, and they had black edges around them. And I was just took the moment to just stop and pause and breathe and look at the world around me. And it just helped me move to wanna to praise God. It just put me in a place where I was like, God, this is amazing. This is this thing in my yard that I walk past all the time. And I've never taken the time to look closely at it. But when I do, it reminds me that you are such a great creator and you are so big and you are worthy of my delight and my praise. And so there are lots of things in your life like that, that if you just take the time to pause and to slow down, you will notice the good works of God all around you. God is doing things in your life all the time that you might not take the time to stop and intentionally celebrate. And so when you stop and you notice those things, that's a way that you can uh, praise God. So stop to take the time for really all of those little things. There's probably a million things that happens in your day that's worthy of praising God that you don't even notice because you're going so quickly and you don't take the time to stop and say, wait a second, this is actually worthy of praising God for. There's probably a bunch of things that you've prayed for that you got that you didn't even stop to like pause. I know I do that all the time. I will pray for something and I'll pray for something and then it happens and I don't even take the time to thank God for it. I don't take the time to stop and celebrate it. I don't take the time to notice it. And so developing these habits of like joy and delight and celebration in your life, it's a way to just help you connect to the God who is the giver of all good things, the giver of all of those gifts. Um, one of the things when I was struggling with anxiety a lot, I read this poem, don't worry, I'm not gonna read it to you. <laughs> but one of the things that uh, this poem pointed out was worship is attention. And a lot of times we give um, things that we're struggling with attention and we give bad things our attention and we give our worries our attention, but we don't stop to give good things our attention. And so it's almost like we're praising the bad because we give it so much of our time and attention. And so that for me really convicted me and challenged me to stop slow down and give the good things my attention to. And so um, that's why I like the word delight so much um, because I stopped to take delight in things and people and stopped to thank God for them. Um, there's some verses from scripture that I love because when I think about delight, I always think about this verse from Zephaniah. And it says, the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but rejoice over you with singing. And the reason I like that verse so much is it, be, it reminds us that God actually delights in us. When we think of this word delight, God is actually delighting in us. God is rejoicing over us with singing. And so we can take the moment to stop and to pause and take delight in the things of God that is worthy of taking delight in. And so that's gonna look different for all of you. Like I mentioned for me, I really like pausing. I like looking at nature. Um, there are lots of practical ways that you can do this. Um, sometimes if I'm going through a season where I'm struggling a lot and feeling anxious, I will take a picture on my phone each day of something that is bringing me joy, something that's bringing me delight. Um, and I will intentionally take a picture of it so it's in my camera roll and I can go back and look at it and think, God, these are all the things that I had to be thankful for. These are all the things that moved me to praise you. And they're like really small things. So sometimes if you're feeling overwhelmed by something, you don't have to focus on like, big things. You can focus on the really tiny things. God, I really like my shoes. There, I'm going to say thank you for them. God, I like this class. Thank you for this. I like this friend. Um, there's always little things that you can stop and say, God, I'm delighting in this thing. And also take the time to celebrate that. Take the time to actually pause to say to a friend, like this thing was tough and it worked out for me. Uh, let's celebrate it together. Let's thank God for it together. Let's have a party and be thankful for this thing. So there are all kinds of ways that in your life when you're struggling, you can take the, mo the moment to pause and actually experience God's delight. I wanted to point out this verse. Um, this is Matthew 18, 28 through 30 in the message. And it says, are you tired, worn out, 
burned out on religion, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. I love those verses. I love that kind of way that God describes there of walking with him, that it's light, that it's easy, that it's not heavy, that it's not ill-fitting, that God helps us turn, learn to live freely and lightly. I love thinking that God at the end of the day is thinking, what delighted you today, Kendall? What delighted you? What did you notice today? What did, brought you joy today? God cares about these things. God cares that you are celebrating, that you were delighting, that you were looking around the world that he made and that you were praising him through it. And so things like Bible reading and scripture are good too, but there's all kinds of ways that we can connect with God, all kinds of ways that we can look around. And so maybe just take a moment right now to think of what was something that brought you delight this weekend? Really small. It could have been something you ate that was delicious. It could have been a talk with a friend, time you had with your family, something that you saw, something that brought you joy. Not anything big, but maybe just think to yourself and maybe later take the time to thank God for that. Thank God for the joy and the delight that you experienced just this weekend. I wanted to end tonight by pointing out something um, from scripture that Jesus often says, um, what do you want me to do for you? So if you look in the Bible, a lot of times when Jesus meets somebody, um, he'll ask them that question. He'll say, what do you want me to do with, for you? And so and when you're thinking about spiritual disciplines and you're thinking about the ways that you can connect with God, answer that question, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Maybe you're like me and you're feeling anxious and so you want to put some things in your life that help you not feel that way. Um, maybe you just want to like maybe experience God and get to know more about him. So maybe he's calling you to read your Bible more. So what are the things in your life that you want Jesus to do for you? And I love that question because it's really practical. God wants to help us. God wants to give us what we need. So what are the practices that you can put into your life that help you to connect with God. So for me, one of those is joy and delight. And so I just really encourage you guys to just continue to work that as a practice into your life and to look for those ways that you can um, intentionally connect with God. The worship team can come back up and I will close us in prayer. Let's pray guys. God, we wanna be people who just delight in you. We're so thankful that your word tells us that you delight in us, that you rejoice over us with singing. So God, help us to be those people that delight in you, that can look around the world and be moved to praise. Um, help us to focus on the things that are good, the things that you call us to, God. Um, thank you for loving us. We love you, God. Amen.